So into our previous video, we have discussed about the deployment methods of your cloud. Now here in this video, I am going to introduce you what are the differences generally we have into your physical as well as your cloud infrastructures. As we know, we have seen a lot of advantage of your cloud over your physical. So what are the different advantage generally we have, we are going to discuss in brief over here. So very first again, if I talk about the cost, as if I'm talking about the physical infrastructure, you're going to create your own infrastructure at your end, where you'll be maintaining your own servers, maintaining your own particular scalings, maintaining the security for your servers. Again, if I talk about the cloud computing, here everything is done by the cloud. And if I talk about the cost, as I told into your physical infrastructure, all the costs you need to bear. As if you're talking about the security, you need to create your own firewall. You need to keep an engineer to check your logs. You also need to keep the security updates for your own infrastructure. So everything you need to pay by your own. If you talk about the cloud computing, it will only provide you the services. You just need to enable those services and there is very low cost for using those particular services. And if you're using those services, you need to pay. And if you are going to reduce those particular services or, you know, free up those services, you don't have to pay again. So here I can say you pay as you go. The number of resources you generally use, the number of services you need to use till you are using those particular services and the resources you need to pay. After that, as the service free up, you don't have to pay for those services. So that cost is very low into your cloud computing. Next, again, I talk about this troubleshooting this infrastructure. As if I'm talking about your physical infrastructure, we know the physical infrastructure has all the servers at your end. So you need to maintain those particular servers by updates, by security, as well as by maintaining a backup of those particular servers, which is difficult to manage. As we know, you will be having huge amount of data, huge amount of users who will be having different permissions. And to maintain those particular permissions and to check every time what the users are accessing from your infrastructure is highly difficult for you. But again, if I talk about your cloud computing, it is very easy to troubleshoot if you have any kind of errors or if your users are getting access to any of your services which you don't want to provide them. For each and every services, you have a different logs, different you know portals for moving ahead to check what are the particular services are accessed by different users and the infrastructure which are used by different logins and different regions. Next we have that is talk downtime. Now if I talk about your physical servers downtime, as we know, we may to maintain it a lot. If you are maintaining those particular servers, they will provide you the availability of this particular services. But if you haven't created a redundant servers and if you are not managing it, automatically you will have a downtime of your servers and once you have a downtime none of the users will be able to use your services and you will be again facing a difficulty to maintain and make it up but if you talk about your cloud computing you don't have a downtime as your cloud computing providers provides you an assurance for it that you will be having a redundant servers ready for your services Whenever you create an infrastructure, it is a full time up infrastructure. That means whenever any of the servers have any particular downtime, the other server will be ready for deploying your service and continue to deploy your services to your end users. Next again, if I talk about the scalability, as said, if you're having an infrastructure, for example, if you have two servers, which is deploying your own applications and your users are accessing those particular applications, from your end users or from your end desk. So what happens, like if in your peak hours or peak days, n number of traffics come into access to your applications. That time you face a difficulty to manage those particular loads or those particular traffic which is coming into your servers. So what the easy thing you do, you just increase the servers, right? So if you are having two server, what you will do, you will create or you will bring one more server and create a particular server as a backup server or a load balancing server for this particular servers. Now this is about the peak hours, but what if, if the peak hours has gone and the regular, the traffic is coming in. So this particular server, which you have scaled up will be completely idle. 
Still, you need to maintain those servers even though that is not in use. But if again I talk about your cloud computing, if you are scaling your servers into your peak days or peak hours or peak years, you can use those servers and once the peak hours is gone and your traffic is normal, you can release those servers. If you are releasing those servers, after that you don't have to pay for those servers. So here you are using those particular scaled servers, only you are going to pay for the CPU utilization, the resource utilization for the servers. Once you free up, you don't have to pay for it. Hence, we can call it as pay as you go. Next you have that is data integrity. As we know, if you are using a physical infrastructure, you have a number of users who are going to store the data onto your servers. You have a number of applications a number of services a number of, you know, your softwares into it. And if this particular things are there, you need to have a data integrity so that any servers goes down or any of the application get crashed, at least you should have a backup to deploy those services. So the availability of this particular data or this particular softwares are very important, which is again very difficult and costly to manage into your physical infrastructure. As if you have, for example, 500 TB of data, you should have 500 TB of extra space to store the backup of this particular data, right? So it will be again costly for you. And again, maintaining those particular databases is very difficult. If I talk about your cloud computing, it is very easier and cheaper. As we know, here we are going to use and pay for those resources which we are going to use over here. Same way, it is cheaper than the physical infrastructure which you are going to use. Just you need to enable the service and you can move it to use those particular services and to provide a data integrity to your data which you are going to store onto your cloud. So this is what exactly the differences generally we have on your physical as well as your cloud computing. So that's the reason your company, your organizations are going to migrate into the cloud to lower down their headache. So here we have seen about your cloud infrastructures. Into the next video, I'm coming up with more features of your cloud.